I'm Tim Malloy with the Civic Association. It is Friday, the 24th of April. It is 40 days now since the curfew was imposed, 40 days since all our beaches were closed, and 37 days since the shelter-in-place order was given. There's absolutely no indication right now the town is planning anytime soon to loosen those orders, so we press on. Social distancing, strongly encouraged. So is the use of masks. So we still wear them. You're encouraged. You don't have to. It's not against the law, but you really, really should. A lot of people are not. A lot of heroes in this town. We all know uh, Town of Palm Beach Fire Rescue, the police, our sanitation workers, the people who work in our stores. And there's one in particular, someone vital to the community who needs to be pointed out. Throughout the crisis, there has been Publix and there has been Amici. Uh, run by a, a guy who, who knows his clientele well, knows the town well. Raw food, not just a, uh, you, you can have food made here and you can pick it up. But they have gone steadily and safely through the many weeks here of crisis of helping out the town and keeping people employed. It hasn't been easy uh, at all, but, um, you know, with the right concern and the right attitude, you know, we have been trying to do our part in, in this pandemonium, I call it. A time. Well, part, I mean, you've done a huge part other than you and Publix, that's it. Yes, yes. Um, we have been, um, I'll say, we have been finding a lot of support through our clientele. I acted fast at the beginning when it was a uh, uh, time that people contemplate why, what to do, how to react, this is right, this is wrong. No, no, what no, happened no, here no. so quickly and to the benefit of all of us who live here was inspired by what Maurizio was hearing from home, from Italy, which was in horrendous crisis. He listened to his family. Every morning or every other morning that I talk to them, it's like, uh, Maurizio, you need to protect yourself. Maurizio, protect your employee. Maurizio, protect your customer. So I, I always got this coming to me and still today. So the advice is coming from Italy as well. The advice was coming directly from my family to me and uh, they really worry about me as much I worry about them. And I say, this is what we are doing and it seems to be working, you know. So that's when I had my wife go looking for mask. That was the first task in February. I said, go find the mask. And she went up and down between Miami and Orlando for about a week and we end up collecting 150 masks, and we pay $1,000 for it. And uh, within the following week, I, one day I came to work and I had a meeting, I said, that's it. You know, everybody's gonna wear a mask, so we can be safe and we can protect our customer at the same time. You must be so proud of your employees. I mean, this is yes. not easy. No, it's not easy. Um, I remember the first meeting was like, uh, they were looking at me like I had two heads, and try to explain it to them what I actually, learning from another side of the world that is happening in like immediate you know i pick up the phone i'm talking and i see them my family they are right there i read the news i have a lot of friends that in facebook everybody's telling their own story what they're making what they're doing you know. uh, it, it, so you see the world in the other side right here on your own fingertips a long time successful veteran of the restaurant business Maurizio knows his clientele we have to understand what the customer is looking for. Uh, try to make them happy, and we, tr we do a pretty good job, I think, on that. You're really keeping people employed, too, which I think is huge. That's super important to me, is uh, keeping the people employed is, is important. So our little economy that we get out of Amici, it keeps going, you know, and they don't have to worry. And um, my, you know, we are at the end of the season, but my goal is to, of course, to keep everybody employed like I did last year or the previous year. And he knows his employees and more importantly, values them tremendously. I'm proud of all my staff. Uh, I'm proud of the town of what has been doing. Um, you know, it's the right thing to do. Some people may don't agree, but it is the right thing to do because the spreading is by people getting together. And, uh, you know, the town has been doing a superb job and you know, what the future will tell us is you've seen it already, there is less spread, there is less than what's happening in other part of the country or part of the world. So the question is asked by all of us every day, when is this going to end? When will some semblance of real life come back for all of us? Well, the county health director has this sort of guideline, 14 straight days in the county of diminishing infections. That's her guideline. 
Here's our Maggie Zeidman with some thoughts. Here we are on a Friday afternoon. Happy weekend. And uh, I have some good news for you and that here it is. The town, uh, the council, the mayor, uh, the uh, Palm Beach County mayor, the governor's task force, we're all taking a look at what can we do to bring back some normalcy to people's lives. Now, the White House put out something a week ago, yesterday. See, that's the White House there. So it's not Maggie making this up. This is the White House. This is the, the coronavirus task force. So they've divided it into three phases that help you to know when you can move into the next phase, which they call opening the gate into the next phase. So phase one and phase two and phase three all look at very similar uh, gate opening criteria. And these are as follows. That number one, you have to be able to have capacity in your hospital to treat everyone. That means people who have heart attacks, people who have strokes, pe people who need surgeries, like gallbladder surgery, not just COVID-19. You have to be able to have the capacity within your hospital to treat everyone. Number two, you have to see a downward trajectory over a 14-day period of time, over a 14-day period of time of cases day over day. And we are monitoring that, and the state's monitoring that, and the county is monitoring that. Um, now, that's a little tough because as you know, as you all know, that as we get um, information in from labs, sometimes you can get a bump up, but yet the blood may have been drawn six days ago or five days ago. So you have to look at other things too. And the other criteria that is suggested by the White House, by Dr. Burks and Fauci that we look at are the trend of respiratory ailments as people come into the emergency room. That's one place you can track it. So you're looking at respiratory illnesses, cough, uh, shortness of breath, and fever and the county and the state do track that and we get those reports and you can see them too on the covid19.gov uh, um, website so you're looking at that the other thing you have to be able to do is to test people so that if we do have an upswing we know that we have it and we can immediately contain and mitigate so you have to be able to test people who have symptoms and you have to be able to have enough people in the Department of Health to do contact tracing, to reach out to those people who are positive, find out who they've been with. So that's the plan. And for phase two, you go through another 14 days and then the gate opens. If you meet the criteria of the downward trajectory, hospitals are in good shape, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a plan for phasing in life. And I just wanted you to know about that and to know how it, how it will look. Phase three, we're open. Um, uh, the other differences between phases two, phase one, you're still confined to if you are out 10, if phase two is 50, you can have 50 uh, people. So it, it, these are all the things that have been looked at, I think very carefully, but it does not negate the things that we are already doing, those you will continue to do. And they are social distance, wear a mask, very important when you're in a public place that you wear a mask, um, wash your hands, don't touch your face, cough, sneeze into your elbow, etc. Disinfect surfaces. So those things all still stay in place and those are your personal obligations. The government will be looking at watching these statistics very carefully. Your town government will, the county will, the state will, the United States federal government will to see how we're doing. And not everybody will open up everything at the same time. I mean, we're part of a little hot spot in the south, in uh, in the southern part of Florida, but other areas either maybe have not hit, reached their peak yet, or maybe they have and it's over. So you know, you have to you have to do this more surgically, I would say. So the good news is all of this is being looked at. There is a um, there there's a there's a way to go about this and I think that it's being done in a very careful way but you will have your own personal responsibility to continue to take care of yourself and to not infect other people so I wanted you to know that and I wanted you to know that life will this will end when we have a vaccine this definitely ends so it's not forever so let's do what we can you're doing such a great job I mean this town is doing an amazing job and all of the people who have made that happen. So that's all of you out there who have done that. So just keep it up, have a great weekend, 
this is what we're looking at. So there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We're in this, everybody says we're in this together. This town really has been in this together. And I thank you for that because you've really, you've done what you needed to do. And so we'll just continue. We'll be all right, you'll see. All right, have a good weekend. For now, the schools are closed. The kids are home, the teachers are improvising. What's it like to have a day in the life of a teacher in our area? More now from Wendy Rulledge. Tim, the schools have been closed for weeks now. A very challenging situation for both the students and the teachers who were really trying to figure out how to teach and learn remotely. We spoke with a science teacher at Palm Beach Day Academy, Aaron Mitchell, about how things are going both for the students and the teachers. Hi, my name is Erin Mitchell and I'm a science teacher here at Palm Beach Day Academy. Science teacher Erin Mitchell is working very long hours, tapping into her creative side to find ways to reach out to her students. Here, making this Earth Day video tour of all the projects her students were working on through the school year. I definitely have had some challenges with transitioning into the online learning. I had no idea it would be so time consuming. I really didn't expect to be so exhausted after going live with them for the day. With this being said, I definitely feel like I'm getting in the groove. We're currently in week four. Learning the pacing, how long things will take to get through with the kids. And I have to be really flexible. You know, we're all in this together. I want to cover the curriculum I'm supposed to, but I'd rather do things really well and not have the kids stressed out. And I have to say, I'm super proud of my kids. I mean, this is not easy for them either. They're learning all their different classes and how to navigate them. I mean, they're showing up to class on time. They are really engaged. They're participating, doing their assignments. And it's just so great to see their faces. It really is the highlight of my day. I also think that I'm forming different kinds of relationships with the kids, you know, with the one-on-one and the emails. So I just think our relationships are continuing to grow and build just in a different way. Beaches are closed, parks are closed. Even the zoo is closed, but there are things still happening at the zoo. And once again, here's Wendy. Tim, as you well know, the Palm Beach Zoo is a very popular destination for families, tourists, and yet it has been shuttered since March 18th. On top of that, uh, there's been a lot of zoo talk lately, what with several tigers at the Bronx Zoo testing positive for COVID-19. So we reached out to the head of the zoo, Margo McKnight, to catch us up on what's going on during this COVID isolation period with herself, her staff, and of course the animals. Interestingly enough, the animals are seemingly missing humans too, because although their caretakers are here every day, they're used to crowds. So when you do go to the zoo, you get a lot of attention. It's this interesting experiment. The animals definitely are entertained by the guests way more than we ever thought. Zoos are in the news a lot these days, particularly because of the tigers at the Bronx Zoo testing positive for COVID-19. What concerns do you have about the tigers at the Palm Beach Zoo? The good news for us as soon as COVID came into being as a problem for Florida, we immediately started using the biosecure protocols that the Bronx Zoo is using now. So using personal protection on all of our staff that work with the tigers, including face shields and using tongs to feed them, that was all in place before we heard about COVID. So not just for the tigers, but all of the animals. We thought it might as well just take extra precaution. For us, it's especially sensitive because we do have a pregnant female Malayan tiger. They're trained that we can take blood and we do sonograms on the female and she does all of this stuff voluntarily. She's got a great relationship with the staff. So she's in really good shape and due to give birth, hopefully, fingers crossed, in the next couple of weeks. And I know there's one other very exciting project, something to do with the type of bird called a kite. Can you describe that project? So swallowtail kites are these amazing birds. I bet some of the folks listening to this are going to be like, yes, I know what they are. They're these gorgeous raptor or bird of prey, and they've returned back to the Palm Beach area starting in March, and they're building nests and raising babies right now. Well, we are working with Environmental Resource Management Group and the Avian Conservation Research Institute and the Palm Beach Zoo, and we've radio tagged some of these birds last year. So we're able to watch them migrate 5,000 miles down to South America the end of last summer, and they're back. We've seen them over the zoo, so you know they're flying over Palm Beach. They're just a beautiful black and white bird. 
aerobatically soaring above your heads. And once you see one, you will notice them all of the time, I promise you. Though the days tend to blur together, it is the weekend now. And so here's a reminder, lest we all relax. In the last 24 hours, Florida, the state had its biggest spike in cases since the crisis began. So follow the rules, wear a mask, have a peaceful, relaxing weekend. We hope we'll see you soon. And once again, here's the ocean.